I stayed in Brazil and worked hard for some years. By then I was rich, but also bored. One day, some friends came to me and said, We're going to Africa to do business. Why don't you come with us? We'll all be rich after this journey. How stupid I was. I had an easy, comfortable life in Brazil, but of course I agreed. And so, in 1659, I went to sea again. At first, all went well, but then there was a terrible storm. For twelve days, the wind and the rain didn't stop. We lost three men in the sea, and soon the ship had holes in its sides. We're all going to die this time, I said to myself. Then one morning... One of the sailors saw land, but the next minute our ship hit some sand just under the sea. The ship could not move, and we were really in danger now. The sea was trying to break the ship into pieces, and we had very little time. Quickly, we put a boat into the sea and got off the ship. But the sea was very rough, and our little boat could not live for long in that wild water. Half an hour later, the angry sea turned our boat over, and we were all in the water. I looked round for my friends, but I could see nobody. I was alone. That day I was lucky, and the sea carried me to the shore. I could not see the land, only mountains of water all around me. Then, suddenly, I felt the ground under my feet. Another mountain of water came, pushed me up the beach, and I fell on the wet sand. At first, I was very thankful to be alive. Slowly, I got to my feet and went higher up the shore. From there I looked out to sea. I could see our ship, but it was wrecked, and there was nobody near it. There was nobody in the water. All my friends were dead. I was alive, but in a strange, wild country, with no food, no water, and no gun. It was dark now and I was tired. I was afraid to sleep on the shore. Perhaps there were wild animals there. So I went up into a tree, and I stayed there all night. Chapter 4 A New Life on an Island When day came, the sea was quiet again. I looked for our ship, and to my surprise, it was still there, and still in one piece. I think I can swim to it, I said to myself. So I walked down to the sea, and before long, I was at the ship, and was swimming round it. But how could I get onto it? In the end, I got in through a hole in the side, but it wasn't easy. There was a lot of water in the ship, but the sand under the sea was still holding the ship in one place. The back of the ship was high out of the water, and I was very thankful for this because all the ship's food was there. I was very hungry so I began to eat something at once. Then I decided to take some of it back to the shore with me. But how could I get it there? I looked around the ship, and after a few minutes, I found some long pieces of wood. 
I tied them together with rope. Then I got the things that I wanted from the ship. There was a big box of food, rice and salted meat and hard ship's bread. I also took many strong knives and other tools, the ship's sails and ropes, paper, pens, books, and seven guns. Now I needed a little sail from the ship, and then I was ready. Slowly and carefully, I went back to the shore. It was difficult to stop my things from falling into the sea, but in the end, I got everything onto the shore. Now I needed somewhere to keep my things. There were some hills around me, so I decided to build myself a little house on one of them. I walked to the top of the highest hill and looked down. I was very unhappy, because I saw then that I was on an island. There were two smaller islands a few miles away, and after that, only the sea. Just the sea, for mile after mile after mile. After a time, I found a little cave in the side of a hill. In front of it, there was a good place to make a home. So I used the ship's sails, rope, and pieces of wood. And after a lot of hard work, I had a very fine tent. The cave at the back of my tent was a good place to keep my food. And so I called it my kitchen. That night... I went to sleep in my new home. The next day, I thought about the possible dangers on the island. Were there wild animals? And perhaps wild people, too, on my island? I didn't know, but I was very afraid. So I decided to build a very strong fence. I cut down young trees and put them in the ground, in a half circle around the front of my tent. I used many of the ship's ropes, too, and in the end my fence was as strong as a stone wall. Nobody could get over it, through it, or round it. Making tents and building fences is hard work. I needed many tools to help me. So I decided to go back to the ship again and get some more things. I went back twelve times, but soon after my twelfth visit, there was another terrible storm. The next morning, when I looked out to sea, there was no ship. When I saw that, I was very unhappy. Why am I alive? And why are all my friends dead? I asked myself. What will happen to me now, alone on this island without friends? How can I ever escape from it? Then I told myself that I was lucky. Lucky to be alive. Lucky to have food and tools. Lucky to be young and strong. But I knew that my island was somewhere off the coast of South America. Ships did not often come down this coast. And I said to myself, I'm going to be on this island for a long time. So, on a long piece of wood... I cut these words. I came here on the 30th of September, 1659. 
After that, I decided to make a cut for each day. Chapter 5 Learning to Live Alone I still needed a lot of things. Well, I said, I'm going to have to make them. So every day I worked. First of all, I wanted to make my cave bigger. I carried out stone from the cave. And after many days' hard work, I had a large cave in the side of the hill. Then I needed a table and a chair, and that was my next job. I had to work on them for a long time. I also wanted to make places to put all my food and all my tools and guns. But every time I wanted a piece of wood, I had to cut down a tree. It was long, slow, difficult work. And during the next months, I learned to be very clever with my tools. There was no hurry. I had all the time in the world. I also went out every day, and I always had my gun with me. Sometimes I killed a wild animal, and then I had meat to eat. But when it got dark, I had to go to bed because I had no light. I couldn't read or write because I couldn't see. For a long time, I didn't know what to do. But in the end, I learnt how to use the fat of dead animals to make a light. The weather on my island was usually very hot, and there were often storms and heavy rain. The next June, it rained all the time and I couldn't go out very often. I was also ill for some weeks, but slowly I got better. When I was stronger, I began to go out again. The first time, I killed a wild animal, and the second time, I caught a big turtle. I was on the island for ten months before I visited other parts of it. During those months, I worked hard on my cave and my house and my fence. Now I was ready to find out more about the rest of the island. First, I walked along the side of a little river. There I found open ground without trees. Later, I came to more trees with many different fruits. I decided to take a lot of the fruit and to put it to dry in the sun for a time. Then I could keep it for many months. That night, I went to sleep in a tree for the second time. And the next day, I went on with my journey. Soon, I came to an opening in the hills. In front of me, everything was green, and there were flowers everywhere. There were also a lot of different birds and animals. I saw that my house was on the worst side of the island. But I didn't want to move from there. It was my home now. I stayed away for three days, and then I came home. But I often went back to the other, greener side of the island. And so my life went on. Every month I learnt to do or to make something new. But I had troubles and accidents too. Once there was a terrible storm with very heavy rain. The roof of my cave fell in 
and nearly killed me. I had to build it up again with many pieces of wood. I had a lot of food now. I cooked it over a fire or dried it in the sun. So I always had meat during the rainy months when I could not go out with a gun. I learnt to make pots to keep my food in. But I wanted very much to make a harder, stronger pot, a pot that would not break in a fire. I tried many times, but I could not do it. Then one day I was lucky. I made some new pots and put them in a very hot fire. They changed colour, but did not break. I left them there for many hours, and when they were cold again, I found that they were hard and strong. That night I was very happy. I had hot water for the first time on the island. By then, I also had my own bread. That was luck, too. One day I found a little bag. We used it on the ship to keep the chickens' food in. There was still some of the food in the bag, and I dropped some of it onto the ground. A month later, I saw something bright green there. And after six months... I had a very small field of corn. I was very excited. Perhaps now I could make my own bread. It was easy to say, but not so easy to do. It is a lot of work to make bread from corn. Many people eat bread, but how many people can take corn from a field and make bread out of it without help. I had to learn, and to make many new things, and it was a year before I cooked and ate my first bread. During all this time, I never stopped thinking about escape. When I travelled across to the other side of the island, I could see the other islands, and I said to myself, Perhaps I can get there with a boat. Perhaps I can get back to England one day. So I decided to make myself a boat. I cut down a big tree, and then began to make a long hole in it. It was hard work. But about six months later, I had a very fine canoe. Next, I had to get it down to the sea. How stupid I was! Why didn't I think before I began work? Of course, the canoe was too heavy. I couldn't move it. I pulled and pushed and tried everything, but it didn't move. I was very unhappy for a long time after that. That happened in my fourth year on the island. In my sixth year, I did make myself a smaller canoe, but I did not try to escape in it. The boat was too small for a long journey, and I did not want to die at sea. The island was my home now, not my prison, and I was just happy to be alive. A year or two later, I made myself a second canoe on the other side of the island. I also built myself a second house there, and so I had two homes. My life was still busy from morning to night. There were always things to do or to make. I learnt to make new clothes for myself from the skins of dead animals. They looked very strange, it is true, but they kept me dry in the rain. I kept food and tools at both my houses, and also wild goats. 
There were many goats on the island, and I made fields with high fences to keep them in. They learned to take food from me, and soon I had goat's milk to drink every day. I also worked hard in my cornfields, and so many years went by.